Okay, I'd like to do a video about uh, some of the more complicated transformations. Uh, in uh, number nine on the homework from one through 13, uh, you're going to be doing a horizontal and a vertical transformation. And then 10 and 11, not only do you do horizontal and vertical transformations, you also are going to be doing some uh, flipping of the function in various ways. So let's start off by identifying the base function uh, for each of these. Uh, for number nine, or the parent function, uh, it's often called base or parent function. So number nine, the parent function is two to the x. So and I've plotted two to the x. We, I don't think we need to keep plotting two to the x. We've done that a number of times. Um, but I will go ahead and put in a couple of points for it. Zero comma two to the zero and one comma two to the first. You might have started to pick up a theme that I'm not bothering with a lot of extra x points. If I really wanted to be thorough, I could go from negative two to positive two. But these two points will give me most of what I need for just basic transformation of functions. Okay, so I've got these two points, zero, one, and one, two, for that parent function. Okay, my second one has a parent function that's also two to the x, so I'll be going back and using that parent function. My third one has a parent function that I've worked with before in a previous video, which is three to the x. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot three to the x as well. Okay, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll start by plotting the points. And instead of two, it's going to be three in each of these cases. And we'll label them. You get zero, one, and one, three. And notice that this one is actually going to go through the same y-intercept at zero, one. It's flatter here when x is negative. That's because we're going backwards. So we're going to one third and one ninth and instead of going to one half and one fourth and one eighth. <clears throat> so when x is negative, we get closer with the three to the x. When x is positive, three to the x goes skyrocketing much faster than two to the x. All right, so those are our parent functions two to the x for nine and 10, and three to the x for number 11. Uh, the domains for all of these are all real numbers. We'll get to the ranges. Uh, the ranges for the parent functions are all just uh, function is greater than zero. All right, let's look at the transformations for this function. This function, we've got a minus one here, which means that the function is being lowered by one. So that's a vertical transformation of one. We've also got this horizontal transformation where X is being modified. So the input is being modified. So all the inputs are two less than they normally would be. So in order to get the same effect as just X, they have to be two greater. So the function is being shifted horizontally to the right by two and down by one. So we can deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and change these to a 1 and a 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot these points. We're going to deal with that shift down 1 and that shift to the right 2. So I'll start by shifting to the right by 2. So 0, and I'll go ahead and label the points. I'll turn this one off so it's not distracting. Okay, so I'm going to move to the right by two by adding two to my axis. And then I'm going to go down by one for my y's because it's being lowered vertically by one. So now I have two points for my function. Now you might notice that we actually are touching the x-axis to this. So that means our basement for this is lower than that. So we can plot our function. 2 to the x minus 2 
Okay, that moves the function to the right by two minus one. And there we are. We have moved to the right two and down one. So this point, zero, one, we went over two and down one. This point, we went over two and down one. And you can see it pretty clearly here. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the more complicated one. And that's number 10. So number 10 involves a reversal. Okay, so first, let's, we're just going to deal with the 2 to the x, which we've already got there. And we're going to shift it. This x minus x plus 1 means x doesn't have to be as big in order to get the same results. Like I can make this into a 0 by making x negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1. I can make this just 1, this input 1, by making it x equal to 0. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to turn this off, and instead, go back, and I'm going to, back to my original two points, and my x is going to be minus 1, because I'm moving I'm going to be transforming to the left by 1. Okay, that plus 1 there means I'm moving to the left. Now, the next thing I know is that whatever that does, the output is going to be opposite. It's going to be negative because I've got a negative in front of there. So, I'm going to make that negative. I'll make that negative. Okay, so I've got those. And then, so that's sort of my my initial function, and I can go ahead and plot that even. I can say negative 2. And so I'll start with 2 to the x plus 1. I make that negative. It flips it over. But then we're doing one more step. We're going taking the whole function after I've done this shift to the left by one and flipped it over the x-axis. I'm now lowering the whole thing by three places. So we will lower the whole thing by three places. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to adjust our new y values. Minus three, minus three. So now I have new points. Okay. I have taken this point, I've moved it back one, I've flipped it over here, and I've lowered it by three. I've taken one, two, I've shifted it to the left one, I've flipped it over the x-axis, and then I've lowered it by three. So let's do it. Let's lower it by three and have it match up. And now you might notice this looks like it has an asymptote at y equals three, I mean y equals, sorry, y equals negative three, and it does. This is our asymptote. I'll make it dashed because asymptotes really ought to be dashed. So there we have an asymptote at y equals negative three. So our range, so our domain was all real numbers, but you can see our range is below that. It's never going to get to negative three. So our range is less than negative 3. And there you have your function. We have, we have moved it to the left by 1. That's the x plus 1. The negative in front of the 2 to the x minus 1, x plus 1, flipped it over, flipped, this, flipped everything over the x-axis, and then so this one, this, went flipped over, and then lowered by 3. This one went back went over to negative 2, and then down by 3 to negative 5. <clears throat> and all along, all along our asymptote, when it went negative, our asymptote was still at 0. Um, and when before we lowered it by 3, our, our range would have been range is less than 0. But when we lowered it down to negative 3, our range became less than negative 3. Okay, the last one I'm going to talk about for this video is this one, negative of 3 to the x plus 1 
plus two. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make some of this stuff go away. Okay, remind ourselves that we had this function already plotted for us. And 